Okay. Hey, Aiden. Welcome to Live in the Hearse. Hello, Carrie. Thank you for having me in the in the front seat this time. Absolutely. Lying out in the back. Yes. Any day in the front seat is a good day. So I wanted to say I really enjoyed seeing your art and videos on Facebook. I know you do a lot of stuff for the Rhythm Coffin. How did you get started with that? Oh, the Rhythm Coffin. Well, first of all, um, don't don't trust them with small children or little animals because they will make them buy all their CDs and stuff. They're, they're hucksters. But uh, the Rhythm Coffin, let's, I must have met them at a horror convention. I don't remember. This was, we've been working together for a long, long time. And they're just a lot of fun to work with. We we clicked almost immediately because they, you know, they love monsters, they love rock and roll, and they love just having fun. And I think that's a great attitude because horror and fun go together very, very well. And I love, love, love working with them. That's fantastic. I love horror as well. And I can see a lot of influence from the famous monsters in your work. And it's really fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I got to do one cover for Famous Monsters. It was a high, I, I consider it a highlight of my uh, monster fanboy career. It was such a blast to do. So I got to draw old Forey Ackerman and a handful of uh, critters from all sorts wow. of films. I love, love, love classic horror and sci-fi movies. Uh, the, you know, all the famous monsters from films, the Universal Monsters, the Toho Godzilla series, Ray Harryhausen. I just, so much influence from... Uh, from monsters, from films, from the silent era up until pretty much recently. Yeah. Who every cartoonist knows that they're going to be a professional cartoonist someday when they, the moment they realize that math and history class is goddamn boring. So all of your first masterpieces come <laughs> from from your math history notebook up on the sides. You draw the teacher eating students or uh, things exploding, and you decide from there on. I don't want to do algebra for a living. I want to draw and I want to draw monsters and crazy stuff and um, all sorts of bizarre things. And someday you get paid for it. And it's it's pretty awesome when that happens. So. That is fantastic. I love that. I, I used to doodle on my notebooks and I do a little art, but I'm not professional. I'm very, just but I it. just enjoy the heck out yes, of it. Yes, do it. <laughs> just do it. Don't worry about being a professional or not. Thank you. Thank you. I think your work is really cool and unique. And what are your influences or artists that you really dig? Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, going back to the classics. A lot of old timey comic books I really love. Um, Steve Ditko was one of my big favorites. His original Spider Man cartoon the comics were a nice melding of the bizarre and the kind of dark style with um, the more mainstream kind of stuff. So I really like that. Um, a lot of, going back to famous monster style, a lot of those uh, classic monster artists like uh, uh, Basil Gogos, James Bama, those, uh, all the people who have brought the horror types to beautiful, beautiful life and made them into works of art, they're definitely inspirations. Uh, newspaper comic strips, everybody loved Calvin and Hobbes, uh, Far Side, things like that. So a lot of what I do is sort of a melding of all these wonderful styles put together and then I ruin them all. So. It's fun. Okay, you watch the um, Scapula has been going on since 2007. It was first published in a handheld zine, which is every every comic artist needs to start off with doing a zine. You just got to do it. It's just making something hands on is so much fun. And I hope uh, hope all the young whippersnappers today get to experience that. Just just drawing something with pens and papers and just stapling it together, and then going and trying to sell it, and then people yell at you. But you know what? forget it um yeah so scapula has been going on since 2007 that's a what is it 14 years now i'm i my math my math is really bad it's covered with cartoons but i well, fantastic. Of, well i'm just now discovering it <laughs> what's that? oh you're just discovering it well okay aside from comic books because because only geeks read that stuff we just, I just started doing uh, the animations with that too. So up on YouTube just this week is Dr. Caliban in the Sinister Monster Doom Legion, which is a semi-animation of the Scapula characters, not Scapula himself, because he's a jerk. 
but it's a lot of that is doing my my daily job as a storyboard artist and a lot of what i have to do as a storyboard artist is you know you do a ton and ton of drawings planning out um you know uh, films and tv and commercials and things like that and you just make like a, a pseudo animation called an animatic and for this one i just decided well i'm gonna do one of those for myself just using my own characters and just make the closest thing i can to a fully animated movie so it's a a semi-animated movie you can call it a motion comic if you like but it's just having fun with my characters doing all the voices doing the story the way i want to do it and directing something for myself without having to go and butt heads with uh with a producer or with an indignant uh, union guy or whatever so it's understood the way i want to do it which is fun that's awesome i want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day and being yeah. on live in the hearse thank you so much from me and my buddy alice uh we really appreciate it hope you kids will remember you know support the rhythm coffin Support Scapula, support the Scarecrow Spook Show, support your local weirdo indie artist and rock and roller and hearse driver. And folks, keep it scary, keep it fun. We'll make it out of this before you know it. Keep it scary and thank you so much. Anytime. I'll be right keep back. Scary. everybody time to talk about horror film bloopers and in the mid 90s there was a film called the scream i know there have been many of them but there is an instance in the scream that was something they incorporated in the film but it wasn't really meant to happen apparently you know in the film everybody's getting killed left and right and there's splattered blood and corn syrup all over the floor and it's very slippery and it's on some of the props well in one of the scenes, there's a guy on the phone. And the next thing you know, it's hitting the other guy who's sitting down in the back of the head. That was not intentional. Basically, the phone was slippery from all the fake blood. So there's a blooper that kind of ended up in the film. Isn't that cool? And then also, in another film called A Cabin in the Woods, there's a scene at the end where Bradley Whitford gets killed by a merman. And the merman has a spout, and it's supposed to spout blood, and that's okay. But apparently, it didn't go off as planned, and it was more like a fire hose of blood everywhere, and it's hilarious. So I've enclosed a link to some of those bloopers, and the director's talking about them. So I hope you enjoy. Take care.